Hi, Roy Trebelan from Biology Bites. Uh, we need to do one of the um, uh, sacred labs, they're called labs that are required and involves enzymes and environmental conditions. Uh, you are going to be designing an experiment to test the effects of environmental conditions on the enzyme catalase. A catalase is an enzyme in your body. What it does is it breaks down hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. And uh, this is a byproduct in the body that has to be removed. And so you have an enzyme in there that removes that. Enzymes are like keys. And the substrate we're going to use today, <coughs> oh, excuse me, catalase is the enzyme. The substrate is hydrogen peroxide. And the enzyme we're going to use, the source of the enzyme, is just yeast. So in your bag, I gave you a package of yeast. You're going to put that yeast in one of those little cups I gave you with a little bit of warm water, not hot water, right? We don't want to kill the yeast and denature the enzyme. But you'll need that. I hope I gave you a couple of eyedroppers. You may need your graduated cylinder. And definitely, so your parents do not yell at me, you need to pull out that pad, huh? Put that down, or even bet, better, if it's a nice day, maybe you can do this outside. You're going to partner up, and in a minute, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you um, what you want to do. Uh, who you want to pick as a partner depends on whether you're coming to school Friday, um, if, during class, after school, uh, whether you live by them, or what kind of equipment you get, got at home. And it'll be just first come, first serve on the environmental conditions. Uh, make sure you got uh, something on your eyes to protect your eyes. And uh, I will explain the lab now. Um, anyway, so this is the reaction that occurs. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down the water and oxygen, the way we're gonna measure this, or the way you could measure this. I'm gonna leave this totally up to you. However, whatever you do, I want you to run by me before you do it uh, for safety reasons and so we don't uh, waste all our yeast and hydrogen peroxide. Uh, but it produces water and oxygen. Uh, the experiment, you and one partner, you're gonna have a hypothesis. Remember, we write those in the if, and, and then form. The if is what we know. If enzymes break down substrates at uh, certain temperatures and is the experiment that we're going to perform and we put yeast containing catalase in a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, the then is what we predict in this particular case. We should get uh, lots of bubbles of oxygen or not lots of bubbles of oxygen. Remember now, experimental design, manipulate one variable. So whatever environmental condition you're picking, I'd like you to put it at different degrees of that. If it's temperature, maybe we go 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, so on and so forth. But here's the kicker now, eliminate all other variables. Let me explain what I mean by that. If we're measuring, for example, bubbles with oxygen, we have to eliminate time. You're gonna to need to set the time and only let it react for a certain, certain length. Uh, I've been playing with it maybe a minute would be what would be uh, sufficient. Um, maybe you want to go shorter than that, but 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 make sure you eliminate that. If you're dealing with um, concentrations of enzymes or substrate, you got to think about how I'm going to make up the volume for the other things. If I'm adding less enzyme, then I need to make it up so the volume stays the same. Think about that one. Can you see the bottom? Okay. Yeah, I, did. I think I didn't. I I didn't get there yet, but okay. No worries. Uh, and then the big one, we got to quantify our data. Now, I put these in your kit. These might be easy ways to count, you know, going up milliliters, how high the reaction occurs. Again, I'll show you that reaction in a minute. Uh, maybe you want to measure the speed of the reaction. Again, when we talk, and please talk before you perform your experiment, uh, I can give you some ideas that way. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be in class and present our data just on the board. Either that or we'll present it on Zoom. You're going to explain you and your partner on a molecular level what happened. And, you know, it's going to involve a little bit of research. And I know we just started enzymes, but this should connect as we, as we continue on with enzymes. So your environmental conditions you're going to pick is either pH, temperature, concentration of enzyme. The enzyme is going to be in the yeast concoction there. And, uh, or concentration of substrate, which is your hydrogen peroxide. Salt, I haven't tried salt, so somebody could try that. Uh, if it's gonna stretch out, maybe don't pick salt. And then the other hard one is the inhibitor. 
They tell me that rubbing alcohol is an inhibitor. If you pick this one, we hope that we can figure out that it's a competitive inhibitor. And again, when you deal with this, uh, I'll give you some tips and explain how this works. But the fact of the matter is, I tried it, alcohol does stop the reaction. Um, but I wanna prove, or you know, at least have data that supports that it's a competitive inhibitor, not a non-competitive inhibitor. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Mr. Treble and telling me we're almost out of time. So I've been playing with this. Again, you can adjust these numbers, but I'm gonna just pour in. Uh, hopefully you got those eyedroppers or I'll get you some at school. But I'm gonna pour in, you be more careful than this, but five milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. That's the substrate, huh? And then in my little tubes here, your little uh, Optavia bowls, I put some yeast, just a tad bit of sugar, not necessary, but that gives them something to eat. And then of course I put a little bit of yeast in. I saved some of my yeast, I don't wanna use it all. You don't need that much yeast. And here is where I think we need to go almost in drops, right? So if you'll bear with me for a second, I'm gonna fill this milliliter, this little eyedropper, you should have one of these in your bag. There's a little line up there that says one milliliter. I could pour that whole thing in, but I'm gonna get a huge reaction. So instead, let's just go a couple of drops here. A Little bit of shaking, and I got a couple bubbles, nothing crazy, right? Let's go four. This is how I am, um, Manipulating uh, my variable, right? I'm getting a few more bubbles. Did the line go up there? Is it past five milliliters? Mm -hmm. And of course, you're gonna have to make up for what you put in, right? Um, the solution, the bubbles is Did the only thing we should be measuring. Oh, okay. So the bubbles are at 7.5? Yeah. All right, now we're getting some more bubbles. And again, in about a minute it took for that to react, you may have to adjust accordingly. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm gonna squirt the rest of the milliliter in, okay? And we should get much more of a reaction because we got much more enzyme and much more substrate. Give it a little bit of shake and we'll see what happens here. And as you can see, the more yeast I added, the better reaction I'm getting. It's growing. But it, yeah, it's growing, right? So what number are we at there, Mrs. Treveline? 30 or 30. seven and a half minutes. Okay, now again, we added more yeast. I understand that we want to just measure the bubbles. So maybe we have to measure from where the bubbles start and where they oh. end, huh? And again, it took about a minute to react. But this would be an easy way to quantify it, just the, the amount of oxygen. So I'm gonna save I'm gonna use time instead. That's great, right? But again, run it by me before you do anything for safety reasons and so we don't waste our products. You may have some tips on that. You and your partner are gonna present to me uh, next week. So Friday, we're gonna do the lab. You can do it from home. You could do it in class. You could do it at school or any combination of those. If it's safe to work with a partner uh, at their house or together or at our house with masks on, you know, at, at school, I meant, uh, or outside together, whatever whatever works for you and your part and your parents, uh, or you can just do it electronically. Your partner and you can do this lab separate and then collect your data together, see if you come up with the same stuff. But I would like you and your partner to present. Uh, it's first come, first serve on these environmental conditions. I'd like them all covered. There's 12 of us and there's five conditions. Again, the salt and the inhibitor, I just don't know, you may get a little frustrated. So if you are easily frustrated, don't maybe don't pick those. By the way, your grade will adjust accordingly if you pick the hard ones, right? Uh, we talked about, you know, if you ever needed a letter of recommendation or something, you know, if you picked inhibitor or salt, you know, that meant you're a little bit of a daredevil, huh? You, you took a huge risk. But again, don't do that if it's gonna frustrate you. Uh, I think that's about it. Then you're gonna clean up, put this back. Try to keep all this stuff because we're gonna need it for other labs. And you're either gonna be in school on Friday. If you'd like to be, you do not have to be. Or you can do it at home, you got the stuff. Uh, temperature, yeah, temperature people, I'll get you a thermometer. If you don't have a thermometer, I got one pH gauge we can, play, we can use. Uh, we're just gonna have to adjust. I'm gonna need to know by Friday what you need. So hopefully you're watching this before Thursday and I'll put that on Google Classroom. All right, we'll see you later.